Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Komi Kavit Shekhavat and I hope you all are doing good. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to use SPSS software for statistical analysis. So I will be uploading this video in two parts wherein in this video, I will be specifically discussing how you can arrange your data in SPSS software. Okay, so let's start with it. Uh, see, SPSS software is widely used for analysis of primary data. Okay, and suppose you have collected your primary data either with the help of a questionnaire or through Google Forms. So after collecting your data, you are required or supposed to enter that data either in Excel sheet or you can directly input that data in SPSS software. Okay. So if you want to import your file in SPSS, so there are various ways. So one of the way is you can directly import your file. Uh, if your file is in Excel format, you can open your file okay or you can copy paste your data over here and the third way is you can manually input your data whatever information you have collected using the google forms or using questionnaires so you can input that information manually okay so you can go with any of these methods to input your data or to import your data in SPSS software okay now coming to the software there are three windows in SPSS so the first one which is open in front of you is the variable view okay this window is the variable view window and this window is the data view window there is another window which is the output window which automatically opens as soon as you open the SPSS, okay? So these three windows are the primary windows in SPSS. Now the task is to input the data in SPSS, okay? So data is imported in the data view, okay? So this is the data view file and the data is imported over here. So as you can see here, some data information is mentioned. Okay, suppose I have list of 10 individuals, uh, their gender, education level, marital status, their height and price of a commodity which is associated with them. Okay, so these are the variables which is uh, showing the information for 10 respondents. Okay, so this information has been imported from Excel file or if you want, you can also input the information manually. Okay. Now, the variables are edited in the variable view. Okay. So, in the very first column, you need to mention the name. So, name indicates the name of the respondent. Okay. So, this is the first variable. Then, afterwards, you can likewise write down the names of all the variables. Okay, so as you can see here, I have mentioned gender, education, marital status, height and price. Okay, so if I want to show you, suppose I want to add another variable which is age. Okay, so as soon as I enter the new variable name, you can see in the data view, age has been mentioned over here okay a new variable is now showing over here after the price variable all right so this is how all the variables are edited in the variable view okay so first of all you need to add the variables information in the variable view once you have imported or inputted the information of your data set in the data view. Now, now the most important task is to arrange or categorize these variables. Okay, so you can see in the variable view, there are a number of things mentioned over here in the columns. Okay, as you can see, there is time, 
width, decimals, label, values, missing columns, aligned and measure. Okay, so how you can arrange these information as per your variables. Okay, so I will be explaining all these things one by one. So suppose we are starting with the time. Okay, so type here indicates whether your variable is a numeric, a comma, a dot, is it a dollar value, a string. Okay, so string basically refers a name or a label of a variable. Okay, so here name is refers to the name of the respondent. So this is a type of a string variable. Okay, it doesn't have any numerical value, right? Whereas when it comes to gender, so I will be identifying gender in terms of number, okay, one or two. So, so numeric variable type will be chosen for gender, okay. Then again, education. So, education also represents information in numbers. So, this is also a numeric, okay. Then marital status. So marital status will also be categorized in terms of numbers as I'll show you shortly. So this is also numeric. Then height of the respondent. This is numeric. Okay. Then price. So price of a commodity is also a number. So the type of the variable is numeric over here also. And then age is also numeric. So this is how you can categorize the type of each of the variable. Now, what does this width indicate? So width doesn't have uh, very much significance when it comes to specifying the variables. Width basically refers to the number of characters which are used in specifying the variable. Okay, so suppose so width 4 indicates that the number of characters in the name of the respondent is at most four. Okay, so if some of the respondent's name is quite big, okay, in that case, you can increase the width accordingly. All right, so width indicates the letters in the variable. The next is decimals. To what decimal level you want to show the information or your data set? Okay, so gender, education, marital, status, height, all these doesn't have a decimal, whereas price, height, and age can have a decimal value. Okay, or you can also take it as default. All right. Now the next is label. Label indicates you can specify your variable over here, like uh, the first variable is name. So name is basically the name of the respondent. So you can specify your variable over here so as to ease your explanation or your uh, information. Then gender is the gender of the respondent. Okay. So you can likewise specify information regarding each variable. Now education represents the education level. Okay, so you can mention over the, uh, the labels, specification, variables, specification, then marital status, then height is the height of the response. Now coming to the next one, which is values. So values is one of the most important tasks that need to be specified while arranging the data in SPSS. So Coming to the first variable, which is name of the respondent, so there is no need to specify the value. So you can keep it as none. The next variable is gender. Now you have to specify the value of the gender. So this is how it is done. So there are two genders, male and female. So for male, the value is one and the label is male. Okay. And you need to add this. Two value is for the label female, okay? And then you need to add this and click OK. So in this way, you have specified your gender, wherein one represents male and two represents female. Now coming to the education. So if you have collected information 
and in the data set the information represents that some of the respondents are graduates some of the respondents have completed their primary education only some of them have completed only secondary and some of them are illiterate so in this case you can have four categories and accordingly you can assign a value and label to each category so suppose one is for the illiterate okay then add this two value can be assigned for primary level of education three value can be assigned for education up to secondary level and four value can be assigned for education up to graduate level okay and then click on this so this is how you can specify the education levels value in this value column the, coming to the next one which is marital status so in the similar fashion you can assign the values and categorize the uh, variable marital status so suppose one shows married okay and two represents unmarried all right and if you have any other category in your data set so you can assign value 3 and so on to the other categories all right okay so this is how you can assign the values now coming to the height variable so you can categorize the height variable as up to 160 centimeters 180 centimeters value 1 is assigned value 2 is assigned and so on okay so this is how you can arrange your variables value in this manner now coming to the missing so if there is any missing value that will be shown over in this missing column since there is no missing value so this is indicating none so suppose uh, for the first variable name if, if you want to increase the column size you can increase it up to 11 and you can have a look over here this one has been increased okay the column size has increased for first variable name okay and you can decrease the size over here also like this so this would be reduced to 7 okay so this is basically the size of the column right then align represents uh, whether your variables are left aligned or right aligned okay so since uh, if you want to have a symmetry you can align all the variables as left okay and you can see over here in the data view all are aligned in the left side the last one is the measure so this is also very important categorization when it comes to specification of variables see there are basically four types of measurement of uh, variables that is nominal cardinal scale and ratio okay nominal level of measurement represents a name or a label with no specific order okay so if we come to the name of the respondent so names of the respondents are usually the names of an individual okay these are the labels and these such kind of variables don't have a specific order so in that case the variable name is a nominal measure okay so this is about the nominal measure so likewise all those variables which are a name or are a label with no specific orders you need to state over there nominal okay the next one is ordinal so ordinal represents all those variables which are in some specific order okay if you want to represent a variable in some specific order then you need to select the measure ordinal over here and the last one is scale so scale usually refers to the names or labels with some specific order and with some specific intervals between each of its variables 
okay so these are uh, basically some numeric values which are showing a range or an interval between the variables so suppose if you look at the second variable gender so this was a range between 1 to 2 okay so you can change the measure scale over here then education also this was a scale measure marital status it was again a scale then height okay this is also a scale measure and price price is also a scale measure and age okay so this is how you can specify the level of measurement of each of the variable so once you are done with this categorization and specification of all the variables your variable view window is complete okay once your variable view window is complete and all the information related to the variable view and all the data regarding all these respondents is shown in the data view okay and the output will be generated in the output window so once you have specified and categorized the variable views window then you can proceed with any kind of analysis okay so in the next video i will be discussing how using this information you can run the analysis in spss and i hope you like this video and do click on the subscribe button so that you get a notification and also you keep yourself up to date with all the videos that i've been uploading and thanks for watching have a good day